All right, so here we are at uh, 4,500 feet, um, cruising from Collingwood, Ontario, back to base in Brantford. I'm giving our good friend, you probably remember this guy, Paul Briggs, a ride. We're going to actually pick up his aircraft, which is having a little bit of maintenance work done at our favorite AMO in Ontario, uh, Brand Arrow. So going to drop Paul off, and every time I've got Paul captive in the plane, I try to learn as much as possible, suck as much information out of his brain. Um, <laughs> So today, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, ELTs and, and transponders and, and rescue beacons. Well, because it's actually almost a year since we had our little our little forced landing down on the ice, episode one and two. If you didn't see that, um, and it's always good to sort of revisit these things and, and stay current and knowledgeable. So, uh, yeah, what can you tell me about? about ELTs, maybe they start with the ELT in your aircraft. And now down at 1-0, well, switching uh, the nice ELT in my uh, Bonanza is uh, the fully functional 121.5 uh, uh, ELT. Uh, However, uh, uh, it, that's the only search and rescue uh, beacon uh, that is aboard the aircraft, uh, affixed to the aircraft. Uh, the 406 uh, ELT talks to the uh, uh, the satellites and uh, broadcasts a GPS position. So rather than search and rescue looking for a, uh, a triangulating on a potential beacon location on 121.5, the 406 will give them the exact location to three decimal points uh, and uh, they can find you much, much faster. So it's a, a real investment in, in your safety and also in saving the search and rescue resources of the country. The Toronto Gulf Uniform Bravo India. Don't forget that you might be in an emergency. There might be somebody else who's in a worse position. So, so the quicker they can get you, the better everybody's off. The less the taxpayers have to pay, the less jet fuel they got to burn up, and the more the guys can sit at base and work out and train and be ready, be ready. for the next one. Be ready. So I hate to admit this, but actually, being someone who was rescued at one point because of an ELT, I actually know not that much about ELTs. I know I have a 406 in mine. It also works on 121.5, but what's the difference? Well, the 121.5 was the original iteration of the uh, emergency locator transmitter, and uh, it broadcast uh, upward, and uh, it would be uh, noticed by overflying aircraft tuned to the same frequency, uh, which we know works because that's what happened to us uh, in uh, about a year ago, actually. Just over a year ago, we yeah. used our ELT. And, and that what that aircraft had just a 121.5 or had a 406? It had both, and it was the 406 that led them to uh, an exact GPS coordinate position. Uh, and that saved so much time and resources uh, for uh, search and rescue, because the difference, 121.5, you can triangulate its position by uh, measuring the Doppler effect and so on, but the reality is that it takes a while, and uh, uh, the batteries tend to peter out uh, fairly quickly, especially in cold weather. So the 121.5, they're homing in on the beacon whereas the 406 is literally sent to the position down. Is that right? Exactly. And the, the difference with 406 is it can be set up so that uh, uh, it takes a, uh, a data feed uh, from a GPS, and it will blast that up to the satellite. And uh, when you hit the uh, the button that the says... The little red button right there. The little red button that's right there. I know where it is. Uh, it immediately starts to... Uh, broadcast your position, and that's why it's absolutely critical when you have an emergency to hit that button right away. Before you're on the ground. Before preferably. you're on the ground. Because you never know what could happen. All of these things, all, whether it's 121.5 uh, or a 406 or a combined 406-121.5, they all rely upon one uh, common element, and that is the antenna. Um, and should the antenna get broken off or should the aircraft over turn, um, then the broadcast is going to be into the dirt or not at all or very weak. 
Yeah, I maybe know. the battery's bu busted at that point. Maybe the well, they're pretty, system's broken, maybe. Yeah, they're pretty uh, pretty robust. Uh, you'll notice they're all in a you know a, a heavy plastic case. The battery is well armored in plastic, um, and they have really tightened up on the way that these 120 or these uh, ELTs have to be mounted because there have been a number of incidents where the ELT actually broke loose from its mountings and was subsequently damaged. So it was a board, it just wasn't properly secured, and it could not broadcast its position. So here in Canada, are we mandated to have, we're mandated to have an ELT, but it can still be just a 121.5 and not necessarily a 406? Yeah, that's right. And, and uh, Last year, after our little foray uh, into the wilderness, uh, my intent was to switch to a 406. In November, your discretion is on your main your but at the all problem times. was the supply chain was still broken, and we could November. not even get one. Huh. So uh, that's why I've just purchased this now from Aircraft Spruce, and I'm um, going to pick it up, and uh, hopefully the shop will have that installed. Frosty 138, contact Toronto sure. Center. So are you going to pipe it into your GPS navcom for a GPS source? Absolutely, absolutely, it will be. And that uh, is that that's just what they do. Like if I like my 406, I don't actually know this. I would assume it's pumped into my it's piped into my GPS. Absolutely. Like it would be. They would do yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Well, Brant Arrow does the work uh, on your airplane, and, and they are very sharp on this stuff. Uh, and uh, undoubtedly, that that's it's plugged in. And the other thing that people sometimes make a mistake on is they don't update their beacon registry. And this typically happens when um, an airplane changes hands. And I uh, should check that on mine. I remember checking it at one point. Yep. And I think it was good, but I should check it again. Well, it's something you should check from time to time because very often what happens is that the data becomes obsolete. It may even be data from the previous owner. Sure. And um, so you'll recall that when you and I uh, were camping on the ice unintentionally, uh, they called the owner of the airplane in Calgary. Which made sense because we were flying another someone else's airplane that was registered to another person that wasn't camping on the ice. Exactly. So, so what ended up happening is they, they knew who the registered owner was, and by speaking to the registered owner, uh, the registered owner said, yeah, there are two guys in that airplane. Uh, they've got a lot of survival equipment. Uh, they seem to know kind of what they're doing. Um, you're, they're probably going to be okay. And then uh, the GRCC Trenton, the Joint Rescue Coordination Center in Trenton, said, okay, well, here's what we know. Uh, we've got a 406 ELT position. We've got a 121.5 uh, uh, position. Uh, we've got a broadcast that says uh, on 121.5, that the aircraft is down and the occupants are uninjured. So that's a huge relief in terms of the amount of pressure that Search and Rescue has to deal with. They flew direct to our position and um, they brought a lot of cool stuff. And they also had the spot. The spot. And exactly. Exactly. Uh, SOS. And but now, of course, we also have, in addition to the spot, we also have our Garmin in range. Garmin in reach oh. 67i. This episode brought to you by Garmin. Oh, no, it's not brought to you by Garmin. We would like it to be brought to you by Garmin, but Garmin won't return my emails to give us free stuff. So anyway, oh. there's a freebie for you, Garmin. Maybe you'll feel obliged to <laughs> send us a free battery or something. Well, but the, but the really good thing is uh, Canada is a vast country, and one of the cool things with the Garmin 67i, uh, aside from the fact that it charges much faster than the older versions, um, is that it can contain a data card uh, with uh, outstanding maps and, and uh, backroad maps has been very forthcoming in, in helping us and we want to get the word out that you know folks if you're down in the bush um, sometimes it can make a heck of a difference knowing what the topography is where you might be able to find water for example no oh, absolutely we've noticed that like the maps that come preloaded in the garments they're Romeo Bravo Romeo contact Toronto 2827 uh, 2827 Romeo Bravo Romeo Toronto Center, Charlie Golf, Romeo, Bravo, Romeo with you, uh, 4,500. Charlie Golf, Romeo, Bravo, Romeo, Toronto Center, Waterloo, altimeters 3038. 
3038, Romeo Bravo, Romeo. So yeah, like we were saying, the um, the Garmin comes preloaded with some like, decent maps. Like Garmin makes good maps, it's the Garmin maps. But there's the little wee card slot on the side of the Garmin, this little hatch right here. And our friends at Backroads Map Books make the best maps in Canada as far as I'm concerned. They're, they do hunting, fishing, backwoods, like uh, hiking, mountain, no matter what you're into, they've got maps and map data that covers the whole spectrum of Canada in high fidelity, beautiful topographical maps. Like if you, we've done some comparison, and maybe I'll show some comparisons between the Garmin maps, which are okay, and what you get with the Backroads Map Books quality of maps. And it's night and day. Um, going back to our little incident, our camping foray on the ice, where we had the engine failure and forced landing on the ice. Where we were on the ice, we didn't have the Garmin's at the time. We bought no. them soon after. Um, where we were. It, there was very little information on what the Garmin shows for that location. If you put in the back roads map books maps, all of a sudden you can see a forestry, uh, like a, a road, an access road that was fairly nearby. Um, there was a trail that was marked, if I remember correctly. There was some. There was a lot more information and the kind of stuff you'd really want to know about if, if and when you're ever down somewhere remote in Canada and you're thinking about you know maybe they don't know we're here maybe eventually you got to hike out you want to know where you are and what's what what you have access to and where the roads are and where how it all links up so uh yeah well, be prepared and importantly i mean in our situation uh we we were very fortunate search and rescue uh arrived with uh, shelter uh with uh, great meals um, and uh we we were you know very comfortable um, had we had these back road maps loaded in our 67 eyes, uh, which we didn't yet own, um, we would have noticed that there was actually a fishing cabin yeah. on the lake. It was about half to three quarters of a mile away, uh, but it's not the sort of thing in a survival situation where you start, you know, wandering around in the dark, hoping that you might find some habitation. Uh, if you're going to expend energy, you better know it's going to pay off for you. Absolutely. Stay with the airplane unless there's a better option. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. I mean, a, a, a little fishing cabin with a nice little wood stove uh, would be great. And, and most of the people who have uh, camps and, and uh, buildings in the bush uh, are always kind enough to leave a small supply of uh, food. Uh, I know that's, uh, that's a long, long-standing tradition just in case somebody might get into trouble. So, no, absolutely. But uh, we fared okay, and uh, we want to thank the uh, Toronto Center. Canadian Armed Forces and uh, JRCC Trent for doing such a great job. Roger, London, uh, guys, Roger, London, Roger, 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 in and got it all done and find form. Okay. So the moral of the story is be prepared as usual. We're always we're always sort of preaching preaching that on the channel. Um, if you fly a, if you fly a small aircraft, no matter where you are, know what kind of VLT you have. Um, know if it's a 406, a 121.5. Know if it's attached to your GPS navcom box. How it works, how it functions, how you turn it on, how you turn it off, etc. Um, and then have some backup backup uh, communication devices if you need to, you need to reach out to people, whether that's a garment in reach, whether that's a spot, plan A, B, and C, for sure. So, uh, yeah, be prepared out there, fly safe, have fun, like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. Always a pleasure to fly an RBR.